Hi, I'm Scott Richmond, author of River in the Sun. River in the Sun is three love stories, two romantic and one family, with a thriller core set on Oregon's Deschutes River. It's a compelling book that appeals to both men and women, especially those who love the outdoors. The main character is Logan McRae. He's a one-time computer wonk for the super-secret National Security Agency. His life has hit rock bottom. He's jobless, divorced, deep in debt, and has the care of his 19-year-old daughter, who's been seriously injured in an accident. Logan gets a call from his former NSA boss. A terrorist cell may be planning something big, and it may involve Oregon's Deschutes River. He wants Logan to spend the summer fly fishing on the Deschutes while looking for suspicious people. It's the dumbest idea Logan has ever heard, but he needs the money. By summer's end, he will uncover a secret that threatens thousands of innocent lives, including his own. Besides Logan, you'll get to know Hank O'Leary. He's a Vietnam vet and professional fly tire. Hank has given up on women until he meets the unlikeliest of mates. And there's Casey Williams, an almost 30 fly fishing guide whose life has settled into a pleasant routine until Megan, the woman who broke his heart, comes to town. Please enjoy the following brief excerpts from the book, accompanied by scenes from the Deschutes River. The Deschutes is a river of grace in an arid land. Over the last million years, the river has sliced through a thousand feet of hard basalt, creating a deep canyon that hides the river from casual view. You can travel across central Oregon's high desert and swear it's nothing but barren hills. Then your journey takes you to the rim rock and suddenly you see it, wide and powerful, an unexpected revelation. Anglers revere the Deschutes. Many come to enjoy the scenery and to catch the beautiful, strong fish. Others come not for what they can take from the river, but for what the river gives them. A steelhead risks everything so it can become more than a trout. It migrates down the Deschutes, then the Columbia, and finally swims into that vast deep where all the rivers of the world empty their waters. It will wander for a year or more, going places a trout will never go, seeing things a trout will never see, facing dangers a trout could never imagine. Those that survive return to the river transformed, tempered. They are bigger and stronger, of course, like a rainbow that never stopped growing. For many anglers, that's enough. If you catch big, strong fish, then you must be big and strong, right? That's angler psychology. You become what you catch. Other anglers, however, see more and therefore become more. They see a survivor that has been through dark waters, that has risked all to go beyond what it was. When their fly line goes tight, the connection is not just the 80 or 100 feet to a steelhead. It goes deep into the sea and touches every place the steelhead has been, everything it has seen, all that it knows about survival. These anglers know that they too are on a journey and they ask, how do I become more than I am? How do I travel through dark waters? and return safely home. The pursuit of steelhead with a fly rod rivals any religious conviction, surpasses most religious convictions, really. For trout, you need hope, 
But for Spielhead, you need an abiding, persistent faith. Faith in the invisible fish. Faith that if you keep doing the right thing in the right place at the right time, it will happen. At any microsecond, you could be connected to something magnificent and grand, wild and natural. Your faith is rewarded right here on Earth. Steelheaders separate themselves by sex, according to what they believe is the right way to pursue such a noble query. The first big split is gear anglers versus fly anglers. Fly anglers view themselves as morally superior because they fish with more grace. Surprisingly, most gear anglers agree. At the top of the pyramid are the ambidextrous touch-and-go spay rod fly anglers whose best cast is a single spay with their non-dominant hand on top. It takes major skill to cast like that, and they know that they are the elite of the elite. And therefore, some of them are insufferably snobby. This is the group that I aspire to belong to. Not that I would be insufferably snobby. I just want to be good enough to have the option. What you just heard was some of the fly fishing related text from River in the Sun. Important as that subject is to some of us, the book is about more than fly fishing. It explores some of life's big questions. Where do you find love? Can you overcome your past? What is the nature of divine grace? And is it morally wrong to catch steelhead with nymphs? If you like rivers, the outdoors, or simply enjoy a good read about people dealing with real-life issues, I think you'll enjoy River in the Sun. It's available in print, ebook, and unabridged audio. Please check the website for more information.